What's up guys? Hey, it's me, Sean Astrom, and today I'm going to show you, using Cinema 4D and Corona Render, how we can set up some advanced metal materials with refractive index information that we pull from the web. Let's take a look. Hey guys, so I'm going to hop into Cinema here and show you guys how we can set up some fancy metals here. Um, first thing I should mention though is we need to go to, or you should go to rather, uh, this wonderful little website here, Graphos dot x y z and this kid or young fellow has made some really amazing uh, plugins and one of which is this refractive index plugin right here so you need to download this guy and install this into cinema and then with this plugin we're gonna be able to use some refractive index information that we can get from this website here refractive index dot info um, and it's just pretty cool that we can take this information and translate it into cinema. Also, I wanted to just shout out to this guy, Lucas Lundman, over here on GrabCAD. I downloaded this wonderful Storm Trooper helmet model that he posted on here and translated it into uh, some polygonal geometry, and I'm going to use that as my main model. And also, I'm going to show you, probably going to try and do this cobalt metal here. So if we hop on over to Cinema here, first thing I want to do is switch over to Corona Renderer. And under Performance Settings, I'm going to set the max passes for the interactive rendering to 20. And then I'm going to uncheck Lock Sample Pattern. And then something else I want to point out is if you guys uh, go into your preferences, uh, so if we go into our Cinema 4D preferences here, inside of Corona, there's an option to enable the developing and debugging mode and there's actually a couple options in here that I've been playing around with and anytime I bring in any CAD assets I've been using this shadow shift option and setting this to one and I get uh, more accurate normals uh, when I'm bringing in CAD geometry so just something I wanted to point out there but now I'm gonna bring in this stormtrooper model here that I set up and I think I need to swap these axes around here and let's see how this looks. Here we are, cool. So this is my little model and I'm gonna rotate this guy around 180 degrees and I'm gonna get rid of this default material here. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is just throw in a plane and then let's bring in a sky object now for this, I wanted to use these uh, HDRIs that this uh, super talented artist, Maxim uh, Rose, uh, or Roz, I think it's, I'm not sure exactly how he pronounces that, but if you guys are uh, Cineversity members, you can get access to all these HDRIs that this uh, guy has made, and um, there's some really good ones in here, and I figured that for this little lesson slash tutorial that we would use one of these. So I just created a Corona Light material there, I'm just trying to pick a good one here. I think I'm gonna try and use this Plants Downtown. Now, so what I wanna do is actually, I wanna go into the Luminous channel here of that default uh, HDRI material there. And I'm gonna just copy that shader and we're gonna paste it into the Illuminance, uh, or rather light material here for Corona Render throw that onto our sky and then I'm gonna go into here the preview options and increase the viewport size resolution just so we can see a little better what we got going on here um, now I'm gonna fire up the Corona IPR and we'll see we get a nice little preview already going and I'm gonna hop into my render settings and also lower the output just a hair so that it's a little bit easier for you guys to see everything that I got going on here. Um, so there's our model. There's a quick little render we got going. It's looking pretty good. So first thing I need to do to get these advanced metals going is I need to load up that plugin I mentioned, the refractive index. And actually to do that, we need to create a null object, right click on there. We're gonna add this as a tag, refractive index 1.2. So here's the tag. And you'll see that we have red, green, and blue channels and you will see that each one of these has these advanced sort of um, RGB curves mapped and and th these are mappings uh, for Fresnel uh, so essentially we can go through here and, and play around with and get all these different values that we can map to a Fresnel, Fresnel shader 
inside of Corona. So if I select the tag here, I'm just going to start off with gold. And a couple things we need to do in order for this to work correctly. We need to in invert the X value on all of these. And for the time being, I'm going to just lower the precision down to 10 because um, we, do we don't need this quite so crazy precise. Um, and then very important is we want to go to the RGB channel here and drop that, drop that down to 10 um, for the precision as well. But this is essentially, essentially the, uh, the colors that we're looking for here, the fall off. Um, now, if I go here to Corona, create a new material, we will call this advanced metal. I'm going to pause my render here. And if I select this guy and go into the reflection channel, this is where all the magic is going to happen. Um, first thing I actually want to do is under my Fresnel IOR here, um, I want to crank this up to something kind of high, like 25. Um, to start, and you'll see that we pretty much immediately get a pretty metallic looking material here. And another very important thing is I want to drop my diffuse down to like 1%. So essentially, don't want to have really any diffuse at all. Um, but I still like to leave it on um, just because even any material has just an ever so slight bit of diffuse. Um, but we could turn that off and, and get similar results. but. For, for this, I'm just going to set that to 1%. So under the refraction channel here, or sorry, the reflection channel here, under the um, texture map, we actually want to hop in here and throw in a Fresnel shader. Now, only because I've been playing around with this a little bit, I'm going to also nest this inside of a filter shader because I want to be able to have control over the gamma of this Fresnel. Um, so, but if I actually dive into the actual Fresnel here, well, first, what I want to do is hop back to that refraction uh, index or refraction tag here. And under the RGB setting here, I want to right click, go expressions, and I'm going to set this to drive the Fresnel inside of our shader here. So I'm going to go um, back inside here, dive into where the Fresnel is under gradient here. Um, expressions, I'm going to set driven. So you will see here if we refresh the um, material preview that you can clearly see now we're getting this nice gold material. So if I just throw this guy into my stormtrooper here, and also for the time being, I'm going to go under here under options and just turn off textures. Um, just because um, right now uh, with the Corona beta, um, it's not actually mapping the reflection color uh, for the OpenGL uh, viewport here. So no big deal. So I'm just going to turn that off. Um, another thing I could do is enable it, throw on a display tag, and just turn it off for this particular object, which might might be a little better. Um, but if I go ahead and just hit the uh, interactive renderer button, um, you'll see here right away that we're getting some pretty dang awesome looking uh, metal. Now one thing I noticed playing around with this is that it seems like the gamma was not 100% correct. so. So that's why I nested this Fresnel shader inside of the filter shader so that I can go in here and just kind of adjust the gamma in order to get uh, the metal looking a little more correct. Um, but if we look here, I think something around like 1.8 looks pretty pretty right for gold. Now remember this, yes, we're using scientific data, uh, but it's still kind of an artistic thing here. Um, we don't ever want to just completely use the data and, and not really actually look at how the rendering is turning out. Um, so if I just go back into the reflection here and lower the glossiness down, um, you'll see that we're starting to get a pretty cool looking uh, metal material. Now back to our uh, ref refractive index tag here. Um, if I go here, we're set to gold. Now it's pretty cool. I can just swap through these. We can switch over to copper um, and you can see how nice that's looking. Um, in terms of getting us that immediate color that we're looking for. Um, now what's so great is I can go in here and actually manipulate the curves. So for the red channel, um, I can just drop this guy down and you'll start to see them getting this green hue around um, that part of the Fresnel effect. Um, and that's because we're pulling out the red. Uh, now if we wanted to add in some red, um, obviously we would raise that up. 
Um, and then if I wanted to pull out some green, now this is me just kind of playing around. This is not what I would recommend, but I'm just kind of trying to show you guys how how this is affecting the look of the metal. Um, so if I bring up, up some blue here, we're getting kind of this crazy purple. It's starting to look like a Christmas ornament, which is kind of cool. Um, but that's kind of the effect that we're getting. Um, so essentially we're, we're changing the color based on the glancing angle. Um, so let me just swap this over to something like uh, lead. That's looking pretty cool. And I think lead would definitely be uh, more rough. But so this is how we can get very accurate uh, metallic materials using Corona Renderer for the time being um, using this awesome little plugin. Now, in order to make our own accurate material or metal, metal rather, um, if I just go over to this Create tab on the refraction, uh, the refractive index plug-in here, this is where I can punch in my own information and it will generate the proper curves. So this is just a really nifty little plug-in. So if I go back to the internet here and we check out this website, uh, refractiveindex.info, here's where I can pull up all sorts of different cool materials. Um, so, but you kind of have to know how to interpret the information. And there's been some, a lot of other um, videos out there over the last year or two on how to do this. So I'm certainly not the first. Uh, but this was kind of the first uh, technique or the first way I was able to kind of figure out how to do this using Corona. Uh, but I'm going to go in here and I, I had Cobalt uh, selected. So I'm going to see if I can find that again. There it is there. So the important thing with this here is we want to put in the proper wavelengths. Uh, and if we go back to Cinema here and if we look at this wonderful plugin, we can see here that for red, the, the wavelength is 0.68. Uh, so if we hop back over to this website here and we put... 0.68. Now we can take this N and K value here, refractive index N, and then the extinction coefficient. This is some fancy shit. I don't really know what it all means, but it, it, it creates some pretty awesome results. So if I hop over here and under the N, paste that number, and for the K, let's paste that guy. So now for green, we have five. 0.5325, so let's enter that real quick for green, 0.5325, and for N we get that, paste it in there, and for the K value, we have that number, and then last but not least, blue, we have 0.4725, so let's pop that in there real quick. And so N 1.8 something, and let's pop over here and grab that last value. Pop that in there, and there we go. Now if I hit, well, first I'm going to label this and call it Cobalt. If I could type. And if I hit Create, that material was created successfully. So if I go back to the curve now, I just need to switch it over here to Cobalt. And just like that, you can see that it, it changed ever so slightly. But it looks like, you know, it, it is a metal material. So it's probably going to be very similar to the lead that we just had it set to. Um, but if I just increase the glossiness a little bit, you can see it's it's looking quite nice. Um, and for fun here, I'm going to pop in another HDR eye and see what kind of different looks we can get going. Um, so let's just copy that shader out of there and paste it into my HDR. So that's looking pretty cool. Pretty bright window there. So if I go back to the web here, I did have kind of a reference pulled up and it, you can see that um, it's pretty rough here with, with this reference, but kind of has this bluish green tint. Um, and I definitely kind of see that in the metal here. Uh, I think it would help if we played around with the gamma a bit. If we lower it um, back to one, that's looking or around there, that's looking pretty good. And then if I lower my glossiness, that's also looking pretty cool. So here we have a nice cobalt stormtrooper head. Pretty cool stuff. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to show you guys how that can be done. 
I'm gonna just bring in one more HDRI because this is just fun to play around with. Uh, this one's pretty cool. Um, and if I copy that out of there, pop it into my HDRI light here, we'll get a nice update. Ooh, that's looking good. That's kind of what I was going for. Now, of course, since we're inside of Corona here, I can go to the post settings. We can enable bloom and glare. We can get some nice bloom and glare effects uh, immediately. Um, and let's also enable the LUTs here. And if I, I think for bloom and glare, if I crank this up a little bit, yeah, that's looking good. Uh, maybe not quite so much, but gotta love the bloom and glare. Uh, so, but but yeah, so this is all working well. Um, and if we wanted to get a little more fancy, I could hop into the glossiness channel here. We could throw in a noise shader. Um, and remember, Corona supports all of Cinema's built-in shaders procedurally. Uh, so here I have good old Luca noise, and that's mapped to the glossiness. Now I can just play around with the contrast here. And now we're getting some, some crazy grungy looking effects here. Um, let's go 800. That's looking pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, guys, uh, Corona Render, Cinema 4D, Advanced Metals. Um, this is one way you can do it. Um, and yeah, I, I really love to get into and just play with the curves. Like if I just start tweaking this, we can start getting some weird like anodized looking weird metals, um, Christmas ornaments, um, all sorts of fun stuff. Change the seed on this noise here. And eventually I'm gonna start doing some uh, more advanced tutorials for you guys with some kind of advanced shader setups and what we can do with the built-in noises and all that good stuff using Corona for cinema. Um, but yeah, pretty cool stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you again soon for the next one.